Um, firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Rennie for inviting me on this. It's not very often I, um, well, get the chance to do these kind of things, but when I do, we always have a lot of fun, and I always like to push myself. I'm no natural public speaker, but hey, let's see what we can do today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Robert Colville, founder of thelazytrader.com, and today we're going to talk about how we can essentially trade news, a strategy which we can employ to um, trade news and do pretty well from it. The irony of it is, of course, is that we can do pretty well from trading the news without knowing the news or knowing what the outcome is going to be. Okay, so without further ado, let's get straight into the webinar. Um, I've got a few free bonuses to give out, so keep an eye open for at the bottom at the foot of every slide. And um, we've got some ebooks and video packs to give away, which would normally charge money for, and of course, one to one mentoring and access to events. If you're based in the UK, then that might benefit you more than those of you who are based in America, because I know we've got quite a global audience. So let's, without further ado, um, my name is Robert Colville. I have been trading since 2007. Um, believe me, I've made every single mistake in the book several times over. Trading, when I first discovered it, did not come naturally to me at all. I was a struggling journalist. I first moved to London to try and, well, make it in journalism. And I realized very quickly that journalism wasn't going to make me enough money to keep me in the manner to which I wanted to become accustomed. So I fell into trading completely by fluke, went to a two-day seminar, um, spent a lot of money being trained. And guess what? After all that training, I wasn't very good at all. I was very arrogant with it and gung-ho, and I wanted to make a lot of money very quickly. And that is not what really gave me stardom in the end. Okay, so after about six to nine months, after making every single mistake in the book several times over, I ate a healthy dose of humble pie and essentially realized that, hey, if I'm losing money trading, making all these uh, rookie errors, then it makes sense to do it on a time frame, like the daily and the weekly, whereas at least I have less time invested in making these mistakes. And after a lot of blood, sweat and tears, I essentially came across a number of strategies which I've tweaked and have since become profitable, but not without a lot of pain to go with it, okay? so. Um, after becoming consistently profitable, trading the daily and the weekly time frame, I've since taught thousands of people around the world how to do the same via the online trading blend, thelazytrader.com. And the fact is, is I love trading, but more so what it can get me. And I'd say I'm a lifestyle trader because I can have my money working for me in the background, doing its thing, whilst I can go and do other things, which for me are a little bit more interesting. For example, like traveling, going off to Russia next month, photography, tennis. And I also mentor um, people from disadvantaged backgrounds on how to grow their own business from scratch. Um, but anyway, I'm pretty sure you didn't take time out of your afternoons to hear me prattle about myself all day. <laughs> so let's get straight into the pith of this presentation. I just wanna like um, reassure all of you who don't know the brand, that you can certainly do your research. We have had very good reviews on Forex Peace Army. We're one of the few only brands in the UK to be accredited by the Society of Technical Analysts, or should I say our coaches are accredited by the Society of Technical Analysts, and we just recently got uh, accreditation by the CBD in the United Kingdom. So our courses have all been rubber stamped, verified, and we've got a lot of good testimonials to boot. Just look at uh, our Facebook page, our website, and Forex PS Army, of course, as well. 4.5 out of 5 um, is not to be sniffed at, and we've earned that reputation over about, um, the past four years. Okay, so this presentation, we're gonna talk about why we don't care about the news, we're going to discuss reward service principles, give you a few examples, and of course, deal with questions as well. Please do feel free to shoot me a question at any time. I believe in making this as interactive as possible for you guys, because I, I, I love talking, but it's always good. Um, we're all on the same page after all. Okay, so get a quick view of the disclaimer, nothing untowards there, the standard stuff really. So essentially, trading news. I get a lot of people asking me, um, on a daily basis, Rob, what, what, how do you trade the news? Um, I know there are lots of news trading strategies out there. What, what do you do? And they're usually very, very surprised to hear when I tell them, hey, I just kind of ignore the news. I just continue to do what I do and let the market take care of itself. And the way we can do this is this 
way is called reward to risk. And we've got a couple of principles which I really want to instill into you. The purpose of this webinar really is, okay, we'll talk to you about a strategy, sure, but I want to really kind of impart a philosophy onto you, okay? How you can make a good deal of percentage points, pips, points, whatever you call it, depending on what asset class you trade, we use the news to carry us, okay? So we've got this way of dealing with things where, okay, we cannot predict the news, but we set things up so that if we're right, we're very right, we can potentially make a good return, and if we're wrong, we only make a small loss, and that is the sweet spot. Okay, so that is one of our founding principles. We trade the hard time frames. When I say the hard time frames, I'm talking about the daily and the weekly time frames um, because they're more stable. It means that we can take advantage of bigger moves. We can remain in the market for longer and essentially just do the kind of things that we would rather normally do rather than watching a bunch of lines on the chart all day. Okay, I've got a lot of respect for people who trade intraday and who have the tenacity and the concentration to do that. Unfortunately, that's not me. And I chose trading to make money and to make a good a percentage return on my capital. I've got no real intellectual fascination with financial markets. A lot of people look outright offended when I tell them this, but I'm very happy with what trading can get me and my clients if executed properly. Okay, so as technical traders, we trade probabilities according to um, what the price tells us. We look for clues. It's very much like a murder mystery. Okay, so we use news as a catalyst to take us, okay? And we can just simply place our trades up in the evening, um, GMT, London time, that is, um, say 10 p.m., or at the end of the week on the weekly chart over the weekends when the markets are asleep and we can just keep trading a peaceful and relaxing, well, essentially a hobby. That pays money, okay? So let's look at it this way. In terms of news, we there is a 50-50 outcome whether news is going to benefit your trade or be adverse to your trade. You're either going to make money off it or you're not, okay? It's pretty binary, actually, okay? So 50-50, nobody knows exactly what the news is going to be. However, if we frame it like this, if I'm right and the news goes in, my fav in the favor of my trade, then I look to make this return on my trade, like 3% or 300 pounds or dollars, then great, there's a 50% chance of doing that. And if news goes against me or my trade, then I only lose $100 or 1%. Well, that's pretty good reward to risk, actually, on something that you're right 50% of the time. So it's very much like flipping a coin, if you give the analogy, knowing that, okay, if it lands on heads and you've chosen heads, you make $300. And if it lands on tails, you lose 100. It's the same principle, really. So we use news as a catalyst. I'm gonna to talk to you about some of these enormous moves we took advantage of throughout the past few years. And like I said, you don't necessarily need a key theme in order to do well from news trading. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of these themes because they're very pertinent. I know we've got a global audience here and um, certainly issues, or not issues, but subjects like Brexit. Um, most people would have heard of that where the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. And we traded that one. And we, we placed the, our Brexit trade um, six months, or even more, yeah, six months in advance of the actual um, referendum. And the returns are pretty handsome. Of course, we we're prepared to get it wrong because markets can do anything at any time. They don't really care who you are or what you do. Okay, so let's just iron out some of the basics here. I know many of you are probably familiar with this, but it's always good to do a bit of housekeeping. And um, for those of you who are completely new to trading or um, novices, then this will be a what good foundations for you to kind of get started with okay so with our um trading we only risk one percent or two percent if you're profitable we never recommend risk more um to our clients of course um like rob aaron and josh said um in the uh, webinars before us um you should never risk with more money than you can't afford to lose because that would be unethical and it will put you under a lot of emotional and financial pressure Okay, so what we do is we look for a water's ratio. So if we're risking 1% of our capital on any one given trade idea, um, we look to target a trade of at least 3%. Okay, so if we're risking, say, for example, 1% on like a $10,000 um, trading account, then we can at least look to get 3% in return. 
So risking $100 to get $300. That's pretty good reward to risk. And we use it as like a business decision, essentially. After all, we should be trading up trading account like a business um, at the end of the day or even at the beginning of the day. Okay, so let's move on. Um, with We do reversal trading as well as trend-based trading, but I can safely tell you this in conclusion, over the years, the higher the reward potential of any trade setup, the lower the probability. So those people who trade with the trend, typically the um, profits are slightly smaller, but the probability is higher. However, if you're trading reversals, incidentally, I absolutely love trading reversals, you can expect far bigger returns when you get it right or when the market smiles on you and pays out, but you can expect to get it wrong more times than you do get it right, okay? So <laughs> where you might get a higher frequency of winning trades if you're trading with the trend, um, you can expect smaller wins as well, but if you're trading reversals, and we'll talk to you about a few reversals imminently, you can expect to get a um, far higher percentage of losing trades, but the wins that do come home really will be big wins if you trade it properly. Okay, so like I said, let's talk about the reward to risk, okay, because that's a lot of things, uh, uh, something that a lot of people get wrong. So what we do for this one, feel free to take snapshots of this if you want. Um, the entry price, take away our target price, divided by our entry price, take away our stop price, okay? So we only risk, like I said, 1% of our trading account. If it's, say, $100, we risk no more than $1. If we're risking, <laughs> if we've got a $1,000 trading account, risk no more than $10. No matter how good the trade setup looks like, it's very important to do that. A lot of people who've got small accounts feel the, the need to kind of like uh, buck the trend and break these rules purely because they want to make the money. They're outcome focused. I can certainly tell you that if you stop focusing on the money and more of the percentage gain rather than the money, your trading will become a lot less of an emotional roller coaster certainly was the case for me and a lot of the people I've worked with in the past. Okay, so reward to risk, you always ask yourself, what is the return on this? Okay, and when we're looking at our reward, we need to do it within the realms of possibility. Now, let me show you this example here. This is Pound New Zealand. Um, we trade every currency pair, really. We don't really um, trade restricted just to majors or minors. Um, we feel that, okay, every chart tells a story and providing the spreads are reasonable and our broker offers them, then we can certainly take advantage if there's a bona fide opportunity. So let's take a look at this. We've got a classic uh, pullback in a downward trend. We've got lower highs and lower lows. We've got this, what we call a high test bar. Some of you might know it as a bearish pin bar reversal. Um, but quite frankly, we're selling the rally in a downward trend. And we've got our entry just below the low of this bearish pin bar reversal, stop loss above the high. We're risking 167 pips um, and 1% 1 of our trading account. Say, for example, we've got a 5,000 pound or dollar, should I say, trading account, then we would divide 1% 1 of that, which is 50, divided by 167 to give us our stake size, and we would see how many times this 167 pips of risk fits into our potential reward. Now, take profit one, or typically our first target, if we're trading a pullback in a downward trend, is the previous swing low if we're uh, trading short. And we would simply look to have that and take profit and then go to a new lower low, okay? So if we are, um, say for example, here in this example, we've got 500 and um, 75 pips potential reward, which is the difference between our entry price and our target, we can say 575 divided by 167 gives us a 3.4 to 1 reward to risk, okay? So that we know that if we win this trade, then we could potentially make um, $170 return. And if we lose it, well, we lose $50 return, okay? So, I think that looks like a pretty good reward to risk. Looking at that, if we're right, we're rewarded 3.4 times what we've risked, and if we're wrong, we only lose what we've risked, okay, which is 1% of our trading account. Okay, so that is um, one example. We've got many more, don't worry. Sometimes if you're new to this, we can, it takes a little bit longer to kind of like cement this. I know it did me when I first started. So. Let's take a look at this. We've got um, Dollar Cad, also known as the Looney. 
we've got again a pullback in a downward trend we've got a the setup punctuated with a bearish pin bar reversal and we've got the difference between our entry price and our stop loss is 86 pips of risk and our first target which is the previous swing low after our complex retracement is um well 245 pips risk okay so that's decent reward to risk it's um 2.8 to 1 so if we say for example we've got um, a 10,000 a pound or dollar trading account and we're risking 1% of that which we should before we consistent we should um essentially just um look to get 280 dollars or pounds return if we're proven right by the market um, and if we're wrong, then at least we've only lost a small amount, i.e. 1% of our trading account, which is 100 bucks or pounds, depending on what currency you're looking at. Okay, so that's one example. I'm just going to talk to you about the pin bar reversal, because I know this is new to um, quite a number of people. Okay, I know it's quite popular out there on the internet, but a lot of, there's a lot of misinformation out there, unfortunately. And... Um, this information serves to really cause people to do a lot of harm with their trading accounts. So in any strategy, no matter what it is, whether it's a high frequency intraday strategy or a um, low frequency end of day or end of week strategy, we always look at the same selection, timing, management. OK, we look we want to know what to look out for and what time frame and how to manage the trade movement in it. There's a lot of emphasis put on um, entering the market. But when people enter the market, a lot of the time when they're new, they don't know what to do after that. And that's really something that catches a lot of people off guard. OK, so a bullish pin bar reversal um, is, of course, um, something what a bar with the open and close in the top third of the bar. It's a sign that we've got um, the bulls in charge of the of the day or the week or whatever time frame it is. And it's a, a clue to us that there's a bullish move next. Whereas a bearish pin bar reversal um, is a sign to us that we've got a bearish move next and the bears are in control. OK, so this is what we call an OHLC kind of style chart, open, high, low, close. Of course, uh, we've got the equivalent of Japanese candlesticks as well. So essentially with a bullish or a bearish pin bar reversal, we are looking for the tail of the bar and we're looking also more crucially for the open and close in the top third of the bar if we're looking at a bullish pin bar reversal or we want the open and close in the bottom third of the bar if we're looking at a bearish pin bar reversal okay so they are our entries essentially whether we're trading with the trend or reversals and they've given us very nice entries into the market it's a little tip for those people who already trade them um, then i'd like to give you this extra information which could help really in the selection process because there is a lot of information out there about bullish and bearish pin bar reversals but none of it's really been refined and one thing i really want to kind of like share with you is sometimes or a lot of the time in trading is less is more so if we've got a bullish um reversal for example let's go back here we've got um bullish pin bar reversal here on the left hand side if that is supported we've a bullish reversal pattern on the lower time frame like a double bottom or an inverse head and shoulders then that's a sign to us that the shorter term bars um, are, are saying the same thing essentially as the hard time frame so it's what we call having a, um, a confluence and that's what we want okay time frame correlation some of you might have have referred to heard it referred to as as well on the flip side if we've got a bearish pin bar um, on the daily or the weekly or high time frames and that supported the lower time frames with a bearish reversal, like um, a double top or head and shoulders formation, then that gives extra clues that it's the shorter term sellers are singing from the same hymn sheet essentially. Okay, so that's an extra clue for us if we're looking at trade selection. And a lot of people, they're very quick to just simply jump into the market without this extra selection. And um, I don't want you to be doing the same. I think it's better to embrace the philosophy of less is more and more is less. OK, so in terms of a trend based strategy, for we need not very many technical confirmations to get into a trade. OK, but they need to be 
I'll say the obvious the better we've got this saying if in doubt stay out okay so I'm going to show this to you in context in a minute um, when we actually go to the chart so I don't think there's any substitute for actually going into the market and actually showing you what's happening now and the trades we've actually taken in the past and we've really kind of like um, taken advantage of some pretty big moves okay we've got three strategies which we trade some are price action based some are uh, one is um, supply and demand based as well for those people who've got a slightly higher risk appetite um, but in terms of actually entering a bullish pin bar of us so what we would do is we'd look to place our entry above the high with our stop loss below the low um, to go long if you wanted you can add a couple of pips either way sorry um above the high of the bar and um, so put your stop loss a couple of pips below the low of the bar so just to give um your entry a little bit more wiggle room and same with the bearish pin bar of us so our entry obviously is the other way around just below the low of the bearish pin bar of us or stop loss above the high and i know many of you are dotted around the world but we typically place our trades on the daily time frame at 10 p.m. GMT. There is a bit of wiggle room there, say for example, between 9 and 11 p.m. Um, London time, because typically the markets or the Forex markets are um, in a bit of a state of inertia overnight, typically speaking, um, because a lot of the transactions happen um, in Europe in the day. Okay, so if we're trading with the trend, we typically want to trail our stop loss um, below the low of every second buyer bar. Um, on one hand, we want to lock in profits along the way if as and when the trade is going in our favor, but we also want to give the market wiggle room so that we can essentially be prepared to give back some of our gains in pursuit of more longer term. And there is often people, typically when they're in a trade, they've got this kind of like um, compulsion to really micromanage their trade and really tightly trial their stop loss and they get pinged out very early on through just being too aggressive with it and then they realize they've actually left a lot of money on the table and that's that's a shame when that happens because typically when you're right there's a lot of upside certainly if you're trading a reversal and if you're just trying to like lock in a few extra pips profit and the market momentarily moves against you only to go in your, your favor it's pretty heartbreaking actually okay so if we're going short as well well, we trail our stop loss above the hub every second sell bar. When I say short, I'm meaning sell. And um, that's the way we do it. It's mechanical. It takes into account locking in profit. And it also takes into account the market potentially moving against us before it ultimately moves more in our favor. OK, so that is the management of our trade. We talked about the entry, but I want to give some more of this in context. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Brexit trade, which we took. I know it seems like a long time ago now. Brexit. It's, um, you know, a very contentious subject in England at the moment. It's divided a nation and um, we actually traded it. And OK, regardless of what I wanted in terms of Brexit, we were selling the British pound versus the Swiss franc. And we on the uh, 1st of December 2015 had this bearish pin bar reversal at this level of resistance here. This ceiling is a level that hasn't been broken for, well, quite some time. We calculated for about four or five years. So we figured that it's probably more likely to bounce off it and come back into the range somewhat, whether it's um, a third, halfway, or even to the very bottom. We figured that, hey, it's more likely it's gonna go down and up, put simply. Okay, so some of our traders, some of our um, students did actually get in early. They actually placed their orders on this level here prior to price actually reaching it having identified that it was a, a ceiling or level of resistance or indeed um, a level of supply whatever you call it, it's the same thing it's basically a brick wall in the way of price so you know some of our students had their orders on this sell level here um, but a number of our students are a little bit more risk adverse they wanted to wait for a price action based reversal you can see it's just reversing off this level there and what was interesting, what got my attention was the fact that we had a bearish pin bar reversal, a lower high of this level. Okay, and what was interesting as well is this bearish pin bar reversal represented the lower high in what could have potentially have been a double top reversal. Now, just to give you some perspective here, this 
range has been formed over the course of about five years. And you could reasonably say that, okay, it's tested the bottom twice in that time. So if, take your bird's eye view of it, Brexit was to happen, we can reasonably expect the British pound to you know, go all the way down here to the bottom because markets, investors, traders, they don't like uncertainty. And typically money will flock to the safe havens and the pound lost a lot of value over that time. But we knew that given this wall in the way, it was like to go down, even if it was for the medium term, okay? So we placed the trade, we got triggered into the market and we didn't actually trial this for every second seller bar because this was a long-term trade, okay? So what happened was our reversal trade turned into a trend-based trade because you can get trends inside ranges and we were nicely in profit, we were just waiting on. You can see the reward to risk. If you've got this tiny amount here, um, risk, you can see my mouse, and this much potential reward all the way down here on just one trade, what we wanted to wait for then is to take advantage of a pullback. Um, we've got the moving averages crossing over. We've got the 20 below the 50, the 50 below the 200. So what we're waiting for is a lower high, a lower low, and a pullback. And we, <laughs> we were pretty patient for this one, but that's lazy trading. We don't expect to trade all the time. Like our trade frequency is typically um, between four and eight times a month. That's, fine. that's good enough for me, quite frankly. So there we go. There we go, there's our next entry. So what we did, we looked at essentially sell the rally in what is now confirmed as a downward trend. So we're in this trade here at the top. We also, well, okay, we moved our stop loss to break even, but we also wanted to Add to the position because you know there's quite frankly we're at the midpoint of this entire range here and if for example um, in a few months from March um, Brexit was voted for by the British public we would be well positioned in a trade which would have quite frankly have seen the British pound pummel in value which it, of course it did so we, our entry was just below the low stop loss above the high and okay if you wanted a high probability low reward outcome then of course the previous swing low would have been good enough for that kind of profile of trader and you know a number of our clients did were happy enough with that two to one outcome but a, much more of our traders wanted just to be in that position for the long haul okay so we took it put another entry right here let me just show you we added to this position as well another bearish pin bar reversal so we had three trades open and then nicely does it, came all the way down to the bottom, like so the previous swing low, we scaled out, we bought back half the positions of our two sell there and then we very much kind of like waited and waited and waited. <laughs> so that essentially, just to give you like the heads up, that was our Brexit trade where we took advantage of the very top of this well-established range and we took advantage also of the reversal, which turned into a new trend. And we simply just sold the rally. And since then, Brexit has kind of happened. The dust has settled. And people have realized, you can see that it's way all the way to our ultimate target here. So it's like take profit target five. And we actually had a sneaky buy order on that level here because we saw that price previously tested this horizontal level twice already. You can see the real kind of whiplash um, motion that price had off this horizontal level. One spot, one 500. So we had the second one here. And of course we had the third here where a number of clients had a buy order on the level, stop loss about 200 pips below it. And we are just trickling into this trade. Now we're taking advantage of positive carry because okay, the interest rate in England isn't that high, but of course in Switzerland, they've got negative interest rates at the moment. So we're making something on the overnight carry every night for this long term buy position. Okay, so that's our Brexit trade. So that's a classic example of a news trading um, strategy, um, essentially piggybacking um, the news. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you um, some more as well because you know this is just an isolated example let's go back let's go back okay so we had uh, let's talk about the general election in the United Kingdom please just um, you know use these examples 
and relate it to your own country as well because uh, the same principles are the same i know we've got people from around the world here so let's talk let's go to the i believe it was on the daily back in 2015 by the conservatives let's go back here 2015 there we go got it you know the, i'm just showing you some examples of kind of events that everyone knows about like general elections and referendums are ones which a lot of people around the world would know about so here we go we had a pullback in an upward trend pound versus the aussie dollar here and this was the eve of the general election where the tories the conservative party were neck and neck in the opinion polls against the labor party nobody knew exactly who was going to win but i certainly knew that if the conservatives david cameron at the time would win then the british pound would rally because historically markets prefer conservatives um, they like certainty conservatives have typically been better for business and um, socialist socialism historically hasn't so much so I knew for a while that okay I'm gonna enter this bullish pin bar reversal in an upward trend entry just above the high stop loss just below the low first target the previous swing high and that's good reward to risk that's an easy five to one okay so i knew that okay 50 50 the conservatives uh, would win or labor would win it doesn't really matter but i knew that hey if i was right and the conservatives won the general election then a winning trade would be accelerated to the upside and i'd win potentially a five to one reward to trade and if the tories didn't get into power and it was ed Miliband of labor then i would have lost say one percent of my trading accounts value with the one percent risk on this or i actually risk two percent that's my dirty little secret i always say to our clients risk two percent once you've had six months of profitability but don't bother risking more than one percent until you get that okay so of course the conservatives won we saw an enormous buyer bar after that announcement and you know there was a real sense of hubris in the market and um target was hit pretty quickly i know some clients trailed their stop loss um, below the low of every second buyer bar and got stopped out prematurely. That's the downside of that uh, aggressive trailing technique. I know it gives a bit of wiggle room for the trade, but you can expect to be stopped out faster than if you're giving it a bit of slack, okay? I prefer the all, sorry, the all or nothing technique where you just simply wait for it to hit your target, move your stop loss to break even as quickly as possible, of course. And one way of doing that is simply, say for example, you risk say 100 pips, um, on your trade and you've got that difference between your entry and your stop loss as soon as you made 100 pips profit just move your stop loss to break even and just leave it until it hits the first conservative target which is the previous swing high if we're going long okay so that was the british pound versus the um australian dollar and that was a um a typical news trade really and that's you know what you kind of like <clears throat> you we use news announcements okay you get them in variable forms like in forms of data releases um non-farm payroll that's a big one um to be honest with you when it comes to the normal kind of like uh, grind of news announcements um in say for example a forex factory you can get them listed um daily effects as well or, or lots of little outlets online you can get um every country's kind of like data releases um i just ignore them quite frankly and for every trade I place on the daily or the weekly time frame, I know full well that, hey, okay, if this goes my way, then I'm going to make potentially more money than I've got risked on this, like a three to one. Like I've got risk, say, for example, a thousand pounds on the trade. I know that if news 50 50 happens to be in my favor, it helps to perpetuate a winning trade. But if news goes against me, I've only lost, you know, 1% of my trading account. It's like trading that, flipping that coin, heads or tails, knowing that, hey, if it lands on heads and you're right, you make $3,000 or pounds, but if you're wrong, you lose 1,000. Okay, so it does make a lot of sense. News, of course, drives the markets, and we're, since, um, we'll see what happens. I mean, in Europe, um, they just avoided having Marie Le Pen, and of course, the markets like that because Marie Le Pen is seen as a radical, whereas Macron, um, isn't quite frankly his uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> opinions aside um, here's what the establishment wanted and he's certainly um, what 
the people wanted, obviously. And with that, the euro rallied and Marie Le Pen went into hiding after that. But of course, had Marie Le Pen won the French election, you can reasonably expect uh, the euro to fall in value because, of course, that will plunge France into a sense of uncertainty. And of course, she wants um, a referendum for France um, regarding their um, continuation in the European Union, which, of course, the United Kingdom is no longer in. So that's just to give you a couple of ideas, really, when it comes to news. I prefer to see them, see them as themes. Um, I'm just going to talk to you about a couple of trades uh, we're in at the moment. And I'm just going to talk to you about dollar knock. I saw this one flashing on the screen when I was listening to um, Rob Booker. And I was very curious to see how it's doing now. It's the first time I've seen it in a week. We traded this reversal at the top of the range here the US dollar we saw this as a ceiling here it's very similar actually to the trade set up with pound Swiss which was our brexit trade and yeah these are the kind of trades which with the trained eye they really these setups don't take long to um, kind of identify at all so we just placed our entry just below the low with this bearish pin bar reversal at the top of the range under the proviso that hey this level hasn't been breached since um, January 2000 um, and um, sorry, 16. So it's very unlikely it's going to happen again. Okay, so we, some of our clients, uh, similar to the pound Swiss sell trade, had their orders to sell on the level, stop loss 100 pips away, but we wanted the confirmed entry, so we just simply waited for the bearish pin bar reversal. And of course, we had the um, four hour time frame with a double top reversal on it. There we go. There's our double top with the lower high here. And that's, that was a good sign to us that this trade was solid. So we just simply traded the break of the low. Let's just zoom in here. Break of the low, entry just below the low, stop loss above the high. And we're currently in this trade, almost a one-to-one. -one. We're seeing a bit of a pullback, as you can expect. I mean, the US dollar kind of plunged in value for the past three, four days of this week. Sorry, three days of this week. My apologies, it's Thursday today. So you can reasonably expect a bit of a retrace. Um, nothing ever goes up or goes down in a straight line. Okay, so that's why people who trade the daily and the weekly, the last thing I'd advise them to do is watch their kind of like PL statements uh, and their broker account because it will drive them insane. They might as well just assess their trades at the end of the day if they're trading the daily or the end of the week if they're trading the weekly time frame because it will drive them absolutely nuts. And if people are watching their trades, it will cause them to do silly things and become reckless. And we don't want that. We want, as lazy traders, we want um, trading to become a peaceful and relaxing hobby. And that's the only way it's gonna work for me. That's the only way it's gonna work for a lot of people who find us as a brand, okay? So let's talk about um, some other setups which uh, we're looking at as well. I'm going to, for example, one, one trade setup which didn't work out. So I want to show you a, a losing trade as well, um, because of course, <laughs> losing trades do happen. There's this one here. Let's um, go to the weekly. It's CAD Swiss. This was a low, a low um, probability trade. This was what we call a ring low setup. It was a bullish pin bar reversal um, on this trend line. I know we're looking at CAD Swiss. We're in an enormous long-term downward trend. In fact, it's about a 10-year down downtrend. Let's take a look at that. So it was a very much a contrarian trade, but it offered us decent reward to risk. Um, if we have proven right. And we kind of were, but not completely. In fact, we were more wrong than we were right. Let me explain. Okay, we saw that ever since that price reacted to this kind of minor trend line here, trend line support, um, it went up and eventually um, reached this horizontal level here. So we thought, okay, it's happened once, twice, almost thrice. Oh, let's just say it's thrice after a pullback, it's come up. Could it happen a fourth time? Well, we aligned ourselves to uh, be in the trade for it, if it did, okay? We've got bullish reversal diversions on the stochastic as well. So we placed our entry just above the high of week before last, stop loss below the low, and we got triggered into the trade very quickly. There we go, and in the profit, in the money very quickly. The problem is, last week closed as a bearish pin bar reversal, which gave us a warning sign. Okay, when well, we see a bullish pin bar reversal followed by a bearish pin bar reversal, that's danger. So what we did to manage this objectively, of course, sometimes when you get a bullish pin bar followed by a bearish pin bar reversal, things can still go the right way upwards, but 
it's a bit of an early warning sign in the change of the wind because more often than not they don't so what we did was we moved our stop loss to the break of um sorry last week's low here and we thought okay we're out of the trade if this setup is invalid and sorry this trade is invalid and it was invalid as soon as it took out the low of last week and it did so we essentially kiss goodbye to half of what you risked on this trade because we didn't take a full hit that's the great thing about it we didn't want to exit it irrationally and early and we didn't want to take a full hit okay so we're very mechanical in the way we enter the market and manage our trades and respond to early warning signs okay we knew full well that hey had we re reached our profit target at this level here then that's an easy easy three to one so if you risked one thousand dollars on this um one percent of say a hundred thousand dollar trading account that's an easy three thousand dollars but if we're wrong we would have lost one thousand dollars the fact is we weren't wrong completely we managed to trade to minimize our loss and that's what we did in an objective fashion and that's what we always recommend to our clients minimizing um losses like that and adapting to things when things might not go the right way okay because markets can do anything at any time and a lot of people they enter the market but as soon as they're in the market <laughs> they're not so sure what to do next okay so in terms of what's happening next well we've got a couple of um, currencies on our watch list waiting very closely to see what happens if euro dollar on the higher time frame you can see here this horizontal level here this is such an easy setup with euro dollar i mean um the, the euro from a fundamental standpoint is still a bit of a basket case and this range here has been going on ever since 2015 the turn of 2014 to 2015 so if euro dollar gets up to this point here we're looking just to simply sell this horizontal level have our stop loss above the previous fake out here and if we get a price action based reversal in the form of a bearish pin bar reversal on the weekly or on the daily we'll look to take that too okay so we really hopefully you've got an insight into the fact that we really like to strip trading down to its most kind of basic and bare components even if it's the point of like simply selling a top of a well-established range and buying the bottom of a well-established range okay um we're essentially two-thirds of the way to a really good sell opportunity for euro dollar and um we're all currently there at the moment midway through that range with not midway through the range sorry but with dollar knock here we go we'll probably look to take profit halfway through this range here because of course if euro dollar struggles to break the ceiling and it turns around at that level of resistance then we can be rest assured that the dollar uh, will strengthen dollar with, with dollar knock so we're bearing that in mind as well okay so i hope that's given you a bit of an insight and one thing i want to go back to of course is um if you go to the lazytrader.com and download our ebook you can certainly be kept up to speed with our um, updates in the market but i just want to as we're running out of time um i just want to share with you something which we're doing today exclusively of investor inspiration and we've got our flagship ultimate package which we offer to people for one thousand nine hundred and ninety seven dollars we want to give you a test drive for thirty dollars for today only and with that you get access to pretty much everything no hold barred you get access to our market analysis our trade ideas you get special pattern recognition software um, you get um, our strategies basic and advanced we don't really hold anything back at all we've even got um, wealth programming audio hypnosis course and trader hypnosis audio course which are pretty new and cutting edge and um, dedicated lifetime support we've got video tutorials flip books we're soon to be having a university style a quiz and certificate um, in line with our CBT accreditation so if you do want to come on board it's only valid until midnight tonight so please do come and visit us at the lazytrader.com forward slash forex training read the terms and conditions by the ultimate program use the promo code inspiration when you're on the ultimate program you'll be saving um, a whack of money you'll be getting the first month for 30 dollars it's 160 thereafter but you can cancel at any time 
with seven days notice, okay? We always felt that the pay and go model is far fairer than asking for lots of money up front so that you've got complete kind of like um, peace of mind, okay? With the pay as you go model, okay? So if you've got any questions, do drop us a line. Drop us an email. My email address is rob at thelazytrader.com. Thank you very much indeed for attending. And I wish you well, happy trading, and enjoy the rest of today and the rest of this event.